such lovely weather outside i felt like just getting into the quilt and dozing off but what to do i had made this commitment now that i am going to talk about sleep so rather than going to sleep and enjoying the sleep of a nice lazy saturday i have to come here and sit and talk to you people about sleep and the same thing you are also doing many of you could have chosen to catch a nice nap then maybe have some what do you call it samosas or pakoras or something like that with a hot cup of uh, tea and then enjoy a like that so this raises this question supposing on a working day at 11 o'clock i decide that i want to uh, you know go to sleep what do people tell you don't be stupid here it's a working day and it's 11 o'clock in the morning how can you sleep that is what you know we have come to do you know that human beings are the only people who sleep based on the clock and not based on the need any other animal just now i saw we have one stray dog we have named him puchu he keeps coming over here in the morning when we open the office a little later you see he comes in the veranda and he finds one nice corner you know spot which is undisturbed and he curls himself up and goes to sleep none of the other dogs say at 11 o'clock in the morning you should be in office you should be working why are you sleeping he's feeling sleepy he sleeps maybe in the night he felt more like roaming around he did that now what happens is that uh, let me help you to understand most of you of course must be knowing it that there are two aspects to uh, uh, sleep one is the biological aspect and one is the sociological um, aspect the biological um, aspect uh, um, uh, is that our body has a cycle within it so when i work for certain time or keep awake for certain time slowly my uh, you know energy levels go uh, down and i need to take rest and that rest inevitably if i go and lie down it converts itself into uh, sleep the same way as we have a biological clock let's say for hunger after a few hours i've had a nice heavy breakfast i'm feeling nice and full but what happens after 4 hours 6 hours 8 hours maximum i'm feeling very hungry i'll say no all that food got digested and right now i'm feeling um, hungry so that's a biological aspect no the same thing happens with uh, sleep our mind our body is biologically tuned into having this uh, thing of you know sort of shutting off i had made this coming to and when i shut off and i lie down automatically this sleep uh, you know takes off that's a biological aspect the sociological aspect is that it is night i am supposed to be sleeping it is morning i am supposed to get up society norms all these people have drilled into us that this is what you should be doing if grandfather is retired and he is old you say no no in the afternoon he likes needs to take a nap tata why don't you just catch a nap sleep for some time and get up after that we'll have a cup of tea a youngster says <coughs> i don't want to work i want to sleep in the afternoon look at this lazy fellow here what's wrong with uh, him why does he need to sleep in the middle of the day so society you know keeps forming certain norms and we have to follow that okay let me for a minute go back to the biological aspect the same way as everybody does not have the same hunger at the same uh, time the same thing applies to our uh, uh, you know the uh, uh, sleep that everybody does not require the same amount of uh, uh, sleep there are amazing people who sleep 2 hours a day and they don't feel tired at all and i have friends who can comfortably sleep for 10 hours a day and then say yeah why did you wake me i would have enjoyed sleeping off for one or two hours more so the biological clock differs from person to person it's the same as i mentioned to you about hunger no that some people eat very little and are okay some people need more food similarly some people need food periodically every 3 hours they need to eat some people can have a heavy breakfast 
and last till evening and then have a good dinner and then uh, be done for the day. So the same day, the same thing applies for sleep. And here, as I mentioned to you, all other living uh, uh, beings other than human beings, they follow the biological uh, clock. If I'm feeling sleepy, I will somehow find ways and means the stray dog will go looking somewhere. There will be some sand or something. He'll go and dig one nice uh, uh, little bed into the uh, sand, curl himself and push off to sleep. There'll be heavy traffic going, pa, pa, po. people will be cursing, shouting. He will be least bothered. Human beings are like that only. I'm not like that. I need my sleep. I'm going to catch up with my uh, sleep. It's the middle of the uh, night and everything is silent. Everybody seems to have gone off to sleep. He says, no, I'm not feeling sleepy. So I'm going to start roaming around on the roads. Maybe if I go into the trash can, I'll find something to eat. Maybe I'll find some pretty female dog and I'll try to flirt with her. So whatever it is, he doesn't feel the uh, need. It is only human beings who follow this. Okay. One of the reasons uh, why human beings go more by the sociological aspects and not so much by the biological aspects is that we were you know the type of people who always wanted to work we wanted to you know do agriculture or we wanted to do hunting gathering talking about thousands of years back now the moment the sun set we could not do any productive uh, uh, work so automatically it became now that the sun has set and i can't do anything i might as well relax go to sleep the moment I see the first rays of sun on the horizon and the sun is going to come up, I get up and I get moving. So we, you know, acquired that sense of the clock because of necessity. Today, that doesn't apply at all. It makes no difference whether it's morning, evening, night, afternoon. But somewhere we have been programmed into that. One important thing I want you to understand is that when we sleep, it is like recharging the batteries. You know, you use your mobile the whole day. In the night, you plug it in for a recharge. So you are very sure that next day, it will have enough charge for you to use it the whole day, right? Exactly the same thing applies over here. Both mentally and physically, sleep is recharging your uh, uh, batteries. And like it happens with phones, there are some phones who recharge within minutes. There are some phones which have to be kept on charge for one hour, two hours before the charge gets uh, full. Same thing happens to human beings about the quantity of uh, uh, sleep, as I was saying. Same way with uh, you know odd uh, uh, sleeping. I told you there are people who like to take a nap in the uh, afternoon. They get so used to it that unless they have that nap, they don't feel comfortable. Whereas I also know people, even if you force them in, let's say the previous night, the man had a lot of work and he couldn't really do uh, get catch up with sleep. He barely got a little bit of sleep. So if you tell him, see, you've missed out your sleep last night. Why don't you catch a nap now? Right now, there's no work pending. Nothing is needed to be done. So there's a comfortable room. We'll darken it. You go and you know sleep off. He'll say, no, sorry. I'm not used to afternoon naps. Even if I go and lie down, I'm not going to get sleep. In fact, I'm going to feel very restless. So I might as well sit and do something else rather than trying to uh, sleep. This is you know, how uh, people are tuned into various things, both uh, mentally and uh, physiologically. The other thing that I want you to understand is that it is not 100% required that everybody should sleep. There are people who suffer from insomnia. I'm going to talk about that more in detail a little later. Insomnia is a condition where sleep refuses to come to you. You change your clothes, you have a shower, you close all the lights and curtains, you have a nice comfortable bed, you go and lie down, you pull the blanket or quilt over uh, you, and you say, I've worked hard the whole day. And now let me catch up with sleep. But the sleep refuses to come. And that, as I told you, is what we refer to as insomnia, people not being able to sleep. So before I talk more in detail about why it happens and how you can overcome it, let me also tell you that it is not 100% necessary for all of us to get, in inverted commas, sleep. 
it definitely helps to sleep at least a few hours every day but in case you are unable to sleep as long as you are comfortable with the idea of switching off so if you say okay i've worked very hard is the end of the day i go and lie down i'm comfortable with my own thoughts <clears throat> both physically and mentally i am at peace within myself i lie down like that with my eyes closed thinking about some pleasant uh, things time passes off and then i get up so that is something that i want to tell before i go deeper that we should not panic if we don't get sleep people who panic people who say i used to sleep so well you know 10 o'clock i used to hit the bed and in 5 minutes i used to be out after this 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 happened you know i am tossing turning i look at the clock it is 10:30 11 11:30 12 o'clock and i'm still not getting sleep it is a very uh, vicious cycle the more you worry why you are not getting sleep the less are the chances that you will get uh, uh, sleep so that's the reason why i brought up this point to assure you that as long as your mind and body are getting that recharging as i said you are able to lie down comfortably switch off from uh, uh, then you are able to face the next day equally important is what we call as quality of uh, uh, sleep okay. it is not just yes i went to sleep at 10 o'clock and i woke up at 6 o'clock so i got 8 hours of sleep no what is the quality of that uh, sleep some people are totally relaxed when they sleep and they wake up whatever time and they can face the world they are feeling fresh and nice and feeling very optimistic but some people wake up and say yes i slept 8 hours but i'm still tired some are not getting the satisfaction that i have slept and i have uh, uh, woken up that means your quality of sleep is bad something is not okay about your uh, uh, sleep there are people who dream and there are people who claim that i do not have dreams that's not true everybody dreams dreams are a very natural phenomenon that happens to anybody and everywhere but what happens is we alternate between what is known as rem sleep and non rem sleep rem is an acronym for rapid eye movement you will see if you are watching a loved one deep in sleep if you go close and look at the eyelids eyes are closed the eyelids are covering but if you observe very closely somewhere you know from under the eyelid you will see slight movement of the eyeball and that is what we refer to as the rem sleep rapid eye movement now we alternate between rem and non rem in most cases it's about 60 to 90 minutes and then 30 minutes you know that sort of proportion regardless of that the point is we dream when we are in the rem state and when we are in the non rem state we are totally at peace we have switched off now when you wake up i told you that 60 minute 30 minute or 90 minute 30 minute cycle is going on when you wake up it depends on what state you have woken up in if you wake up when you are in the rem state you remember the dream if you wake up when you are in the non rem state you don't recall, uh, remember the dream and if somebody asks you you say no no i didn't get any dreams you did get dreams but you moved on to the non rem uh, state and from there you woke up that's why you didn't remember the dream okay a dream by itself is a huge topic i know that so many people have done so much research on it there are people who pred, uh, you know interpret dreams if you dream of a snake it means this if you dream of somebody's death it means that if you dream of a new house it means that i don't know how uh, you know accurate that science is and how efficient these people are so i'm not commenting on that, uh, that. but as i said dreams are definitely a very very significant part of life but they are such a huge topic that today i'm not going to touch upon anything to do with the dreams maybe we'll pick up some some other time if many of you are interested and we'll have a discussion on what are dreams how they come and by the uh, comment what do they mean to us that's also equally uh, 
uh, important. Now, when you look at uh, uh, the uh, sleep pattern, as I told you, I go to sleep and then I uh, wake up. Ah, only one thing I'll tell you about dreams today, that if you are having regular nightmares, one not time, once in a month or something, it's OK. Just ignore it. But if you are having nightmares quite frequently, every few days you have a night, when you wake up, you realize that I was having a nightmare. Something scary was going on. It is an indicator. The mind is telling the body that even though you are sleeping, I'm going to punish you by having these unpleasant thoughts. And that you need to be aware of. So if you are having nightmares on a regular basis, please don't ignore it. Look into what is happening at the mental and emotional level and what you can do about The other thing that I wanted to tell you was that when I mentioned about insomnia, no, there is a thing called middle insomnia. People go to bed either in five minutes or 50 minutes, they drift into sleep. And in the middle of the night, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, they wake up. Not because they have to go to the washroom or they are feeling thirsty or the uh, bright light is affecting. No, everything is fine. There is no biological uh, uh, need. But you wake up for no rhyme or reason. Okay, you woke woken up. Maybe, you know, you were in the wrong posture or something was bugging you. So you woke up. That's fine. Do you go back to sleep within a few minutes? Then no issues. Don't even worry. Don't even question yourself. Why did I wake up? I woke up. I went back to uh, sleep. But if you realize that you are remaining awake half an hour, one hour, two hours, you are not able to sleep, that is generally a warning sign that you may be suffering from depression. I'm not putting that label, mind you, uh, you know, you, it has to be checked by a mental health professional. It's much deeper than that. I'm only saying that it's an indicator, possibility that you are under depression. So if you are having this on a continuous basis, that you wake up in the middle of the night and you find sleep is eluding you for a long time, you have to, it takes one hour, two hours before you go back to sleep and then wake up at the regular uh, time. There is a chance that you are not aware and you are going through some form of uh, you know, depression. OK, let me tell you about a few very simple things which can improve your sleep. Even if your sleep is good, I'm not saying that this is only applicable to insomniacs. Even if your sleep is good, one of the things which has always been recommended even by our sages and you know people, the wise people since many, many years is to get up with the sun, to stretch, to go and face fresh air and the uh, sun. If you have the time and inclination, do a Surya Namaskar. Even if you're not into yoga or you don't want to go so deep, just standing facing the sun not only gets you that required vitamin uh, uh, D, but it also pulls up your spirits. You'll be amazed how close that connection is. People who are, let's say, prone to depression or sadness or are facing something unpleasant, which is you know, affecting their quality of life. A simple thing like ensuring that you wake up with the sun. See, if the sun is already high up in the sky at 9, 10 o'clock, then there's no point in doing it. It has to be when the sun is looking at you and you're looking at the sun face to face. That is the time when you stretch out. You take deep breaths, you have a glass of water, you get some fresh air, and that makes a world's uh, uh, difference. Similarly, the quality of sleep improves if you have something to do the next day. When you are going to bed, you say, hey, I better sleep well so that tomorrow morning I have to get up and I have to do this, this, this. And this I'm telling you in today's era because day in and day out, I'm coming across people who are unhappy at that place of work. They are not looking forward to getting up in the morning next day and getting down to work, whether it's work from home or office, doesn't make a difference. People who feel that commitment that tomorrow I have to take up this task, this responsibility, I have to start this, I have to you know, 
face this challenge and overcome it in a positive manner those are the people who sleep uh, uh, well so as far as possible try to fix up something for the next day that i'm if you are not enjoying your work think of something which you are going to do away from work it's going to be my child's birthday soon so i think tomorrow i will take some time off and go hunting and see what is the best uh, gift that i can buy in in advance and keep it from my child now your mind is programmed into something positive you love your child you want to have a give a good gift to the uh, child so you are going to sleep with the idea that if i complete my sleep cycle and i wake up in the morning i have this task to do which i enjoy which i love uh, doing so anything of that uh, you know demeanor and anything which connects you in a positive manner inevitably improves your quality of uh, 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 sleep taking periodic breaks and stress relief i need not say it directly or indirectly definitely affects your uh, uh, sleep if you are prone to afternoon naps please make them short i would say ideally 15 to 20 minutes not more than uh, uh, that people who tend to sleep for one or two hours in the afternoon can if not now in future find their night sleep getting affected so resist that temptation either you don't sleep at all or you lie down close your eyes maybe just do some deep breathing or meditation if possible or catch a nap with an alarm maximum 20 to 30 minutes i am going to wake up and then i am going to get down to whatever the and uh, afternoon naps should preferably be in the early afternoon not late afternoon if you sleep around 4 5 o'clock it chances are it will affect your night sleep if you are sleeping at 1 o'clock 2 o'clock chances are that it may not affect your night's uh, uh, sleep and of course you know what you do with the rest of the day and how you do it uh, i also want to uh, caution you about medication you know that sleeping tablets are available very freely normally they should be prescribed either by a physician or a psychiatrist but i know so many people who go and buy sleeping tablets over the counter and unfortunately there are chemists who also agree to give it to them because they need business people who take sleeping tablets on a continuous basis are harming them in a number of ways including there is a very interesting thing called drug induced insomnia i was very tired but at the same time i was very anxious tomorrow morning i had some urgent work to do so what did i uh, do i popped a sleeping tablet wow i felt slept so well two three days go past something some challenges come up again a hey, tomorrow is a very hard day i better get a good night sleep so i will pop another sleeping tablet so only that becomes a habit and the sad part is when you start taking sleeping tablets on a regular basis number one the dosage required becomes higher i used to take one tablet 0.25 mg and pop off to sleep now it's not working so what do i do i switch over to 0.5 mg i start increasing the number of tablets i've taken my sleeping tablet two hours later i'm still tossing turning very restless i take another sleeping tablet this causes what i mentioned to you drug induced insomnia that means the drug those tablets that i'm taking are actually inducing insomnia the insomnia gets worse i would rather that you fight out resolve the issues which are preventing your uh, uh, sleep and automatically the sleep will improve by uh, itself and that is what i was mentioning to you that the causes of lack of sleep is what needs to be looked into you have to work on the cause rather than just a symptom not being able to sleep pro properly or not being able to sleep uh, sufficiently is only a symptom the cause can be stress anxiety you know, some form of relationship uh, uh, issues suppressed uh, anger 
many of these things automatically in some way or the other start connecting to your sleep pattern and that is what i want you to keep in the, uh, mind that unless and until we take care of these things we are not going to be able to just do what needs to be done in terms of improving sleep okay with that i come to the last point of the first half and now it's become quite a routine and i am enjoying it i hope you people also that i restrict my actual talk to about half an hour take a 2 minute break and then we have an open house lila has already asked sometimes we get dreams of what might happen in future yes even that i i would put it as a nightmare it is that anxiety it is that stress which has built up so if you get it one or time don't worry but if it is coming on a regular basis you need to do something to find out because somewhere along the line you are quite anxious about the future something is not uh, of comfort level uh, to you that is what i want you to understand and take uh, into it now what i have uh, done is prepared uh, or rather not me sunita has prepared a wonderful series of quick slides to show you a few tips and techniques on how to improve your Uh, uh sleep either if you're already sleeping well and want to in- improve it further or you're actually having some problems with uh, uh sleep so you see here charlie brown you know you see his expression you see his eyes and you can make out that he is wanting to sleep but he is wide uh, um, awake so what do we tell charlie brown is what we have listed out in these uh, uh, slides establish fixed bed time and wake up time even if sleep does not come just because i go to bed at 10:30 and sleep does not come for half an hour one hour i should not change my sleeping time similarly if it takes me a long time to sleep and i am normally get up at uh, 6:30 but if i find that i am still very tired i should not extend that from 6:30 to 7 or 7:30 it is counterproductive next have the last meal at least 2 hours i would recommend 3 hours before bedtime but very few of us do that you know how orthodox jains do not eat anything after it gets dark one reason of course is to ensure that no insect or something by mistake goes into the uh, mouth but other than that also it's a wonderful habit that you should give sufficient gap before you go to sleep 15 minutes after dinner have dinner let the food settle down in your stomach for a few minutes and then go for a leisurely uh, you know stroll not a vigorous uh, jog or something relaxed slow and steady just go around for a short while it could be 10 minutes 20 minutes 5 minutes whatever and if possible have a shower before bedtime avoid tea coffee colas any addictive substance i don't even want to mention alcohol because alcohol is bad at any time i would never recommend anybody to get into alcohol if they can avoid it but yes definitely anything connected to you know cocaine i mean uh, uh, caffeine and things like uh, uh, tea or coffee or coca cola pepsi avoid those from evening onwards if you do enjoy your cup of coffee start your morning with your coffee have your last coffee by let's say 4 5 o'clock and then stop relax chat on positive topics helps particularly late in the evening if you have somebody in the family with whom you can have a lively chat on something positive and definitely not on how many people got covid how many died how many are in icu That's the worst thing that you can do to your uh, uh, sleep. Next, no TV. Keep away from all screens, laptops, mobile phones. They have a very detrimental um, effect. Please keep away from all screens. Two, three hours minimum before you go to sleep. Soft but firm bed, pillow at right height, bed sheet to the appropriate weather. Very small things, but sometimes we neglect. Uh, Uh, that even these things make a difference to your quality of uh, sleep it is said i don't know what is the scientific principle behind it that light blue or violet colors are conducive to good sleep 
it could be your night dress it could be the painting on the walls it could be the color of your bed sheet but colors which are in that range of blue and violet indigo those colors are some supposedly the ones which bring you your you know calmness uh, to you an appropriate level and perhaps improve your sleep think of some nice past event if you are not in a habit of uh, uh, doing it jot down on a piece of paper and keep it next to you that i should re recall this past event two years back i had gone on vacation or i remember the joy when my baby was born anything like that think and relive those events in fact keep a notebook and pen at the bedside to even write down pending work sometimes sleep doesn't come because we are anxious oh tomorrow i have to do this will i be able to do that will that other person let me down write down whatever has to be done put it aside and then start sleeping yoga no doubt about it is a time proven established thing but if you can't go so deep as into yoga just deep breathing through each nostril just for 2 3 4 minutes also it's good enough if no sleep comes in 20 minutes get up do some non stimulating activity and relaxation exercise till you feel drowsy and then return to bed there even try out creative visualization like counting sheep and all you know I've heard of all these things i'm not going into detail and uh, light reading soft music slow chanting music humming a tune or a mantra whatever suits you don't force yourself but if you are the type of person do anything in that nature remind yourself that it is not necessary to sleep as long as the mind and body are getting relaxation the more you get anxious that i'm not getting sleep the more sleep will elude uh, you and finally if it still does not work one night force yourself to keep awake today i'm not going to sleep i'm going to start walking around uh, like a ghost in the house i'm going to be just uh, staring at the walls but i will not sleep the moment you say that you start feeling drowsy go back and enjoy your sleep and i'm going to enjoy my cup of tea i am requesting seema to just take over for a minute and update you on what's happening in banjara and then i already see a lot of very interesting questions on the chat box i'm going to come back to that right hi so action packed week at banjara uh, today we have our uh, ccad valedictory program so that is child and adolescent development which we had done online and the last four months we were uh, you know i think uh, all the uh, participants are uh, very happy about the program and today they are a little uh, you know the withdrawal symptoms will begin now uh, so yeah they planned something really nice uh, uh, that will be between 2 uh, and 4 so that's for today and uh, we started a short uh, cbt program for this month uh, for our dcs students so that is uh, coming to an end on monday so we have a valedictory for that on monday um a program which is coming up online program for month uh, is uh, icls uh, that is life skills so if you want to learn life skills um, i think it's a good opportunity uh, i think next week onwards the prospectus will be ready so i can start sending out the details just get in touch with us all right and yesterday of course we had the inaugural for our uh, uh, fourth team uh, you know which is uh, t1 so we had the inaugural a soft launch uh, so uh, yeah a few seats are still left for our dcs program so if anybody is interested in diploma and counseling skills do get in touch with us of course i didn't repeat that it is a program uh, not only for self growth and development but it makes you a professional counselor so lots of programs coming up our website is always updated kindly look at it all the upcoming events uh, any manthan camps any workshops uh, all the fb life topics everything is mentioned on our website so keep it up keep uh, checking that uh, and do uh, check with our office uh, you can send us a message on uh, whatsapp 
and uh, be in touch. That's what I'll say. So with that, and of course, I needn't, uh, uh, you know, uh, repeat. But yeah, uh, counseling, of course, is always uh, free at Banjara. So both counseling for emotional as well as uh, any sort of career. Now that you know, many students uh, are wondering what they should take up next, and with all of uh, you know the confusion which is going on with exams and you know whether exams are happening not happening whatever so any any sort of study skills or exams uh, related stuff or what to take up next please come uh, career counseling uh, is absolutely free at Banjara and aptitude test is also done here so these are some of the things we do in Banjara all right take care Yes, I'm back. I also wanted to tell you that these few quick tips that I gave you right now, I have made them uh, in a more elaborate and detailed manner in a handout. Those of you who are seriously interested in improving either your sleep or helping somebody else to improve their uh, uh, sleep, just send me an email on my personal ID that is alikwaja50 at gmail.com. I'll send you that uh, uh, handout which gives you a little more elaborate and detailed techniques and methodology of how to overcome insomnia or how to improve your uh, sleep. Um, Rajshri says, uh, so people who sleep well, does that mean that they are not stressed? No, Rajshri, it doesn't work that way. I only said that stress can spoil your sleep, but that does not mean that people who sleep well are, uh, do not have stress. There are a lot of people who despite being stressed out, their sleep doesn't get affected, but in other way areas they do get affected. Shweta is asking nowadays people eat or eat only by 9 or 10 and they follow this rule of sleeping at least two hours after meal. What would you comment uh, on this? Earlier you have the last meal, the better it is. In fact, the age old uh, uh, proverb used to say eat breakfast like a king, lunch like a prince and dinner like a pauper. There's wisdom in what they have uh, said. So number one, make dinner your lightest uh, meal, which is not happening nowadays because somehow that becomes the major meal of the uh, day. Everybody is in a hurry to have a quick breakfast and run off. That's not the right thing to uh, uh, do. And also give sufficient gap after that. And as I told you, you know, take a stroll, listen to some music, talk to somebody on some positive note, have a shower, small, small things, but they do make a difference. Roshan says swimming. Uh, is my sleeping tablet hard work and reaching out to others improves my quality of sleep definitely it does there's no doubt about it and like i always keep saying each one of us has a different metabolism different priorities so here you are roshan says that swimming is my sleeping tablet i do swimming regularly and i find that my sleep is very very good at the end of the day even though swimming she may be doing in the morning so when you have found that this is what helps please stick to it and use it but that does not mean that it will work for everybody remember that uh, also okay yasmin says i was prescribed a sleeping tablet to be relaxed and continue taking for almost 20 years and then slowly i pulled myself out and i, I use nutmeg when absolutely necessary hearty congratulations yasmin that you managed to pull yourself out of uh, uh, this because it could really have very bad long-term um, effects and it becomes very addictive. I know people who are addicted to sleeping tablets and then whether the doctor prescribes or not, even if the doctor says, please stop, people still keep taking those. Uh, because psychologically they are tuned into thinking that I cannot sleep without the sleeping uh, tablets. Ah, Lila says, my dreams have turned out to be true in the past. So I will consider this as an intuition. Yes, Lila, as I told you, there's a lot we can discuss about dreams, but I'm not doing that today. You know, that's not the main topic. It's a very vast topic by itself. As I said, maybe someday we will take up dreams as a topic by itself and we'll have a nice brainstorming on it. Sureka says, though the mind could be serene, if sleep does not set in, how do we spend this physically unoccupied time, which is huge? That is what I gave Sureka in a very brief manner, that quick points which Sunita made into a slideshow and give it to you but like i said you just write to me and i will give you a much more elaborate with more options and alternatives so that you can select whatever suits you 
and fill in that time as you said no how do i spend this physically unoccupied uh, uh, time try out any of those i have given maybe 30 of them even if you try out five of them and if they work i am happy it will uh, uh look but generally all these things which i have collated are purely out of personal experiences of people they are not from some theory or textbooks if you start practicing that there's one more important thing i wanted to tell you that to bring about a change in any habit behavioral scientists tell us that it takes a minimum of 21 days 3 to 4 weeks is what you need before you can actually see results So, if you try something new, something which I am recommending, or something which you are picking up from anywhere, don't say, "Oh, because Roshan said that I went uh, for swimming five days, and in five days my sleep didn't improve at all." So, what's the point in swimming? It doesn't work that way. All these things you have to be patient, and you have to do it extensively. Uh, uh, okay, Shaila says uh, now people are used to work from home option. sleeping patterns have changed tremendously i'm quite concerned about that shella uh, that uh, because of this you know our routines and our discipline has gone for a six and people are making i am coming across a lot of parents who say that my child you know just refuses to get up till 10 minutes before the online class starts saying that why do i have to bother rama i don't have to put on uniform i don't have to wear shoes i don't have to do anything you know uh, So I'll wake up ten minutes early. What about your breakfast? No, you solve the breakfast while I'm attending class only. I'll have my uh, breakfast. I don't need to have a bath. I'll have a bath later. Now these are not very healthy signs, whether it's for children or for uh, adults, and it can have long-term, uh, you know, um, effects. Ram Sami does dreams in sleep indicate uh, 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 good sleep? No, nothing like that. I told you I'm not touching upon dream, but no. just because you are getting good dreams it doesn't mean that you are having good sleep and just because you are having nightmares doesn't mean it is your sleep that is affected there may be other issues which are unresolved and that is the way your mind is bringing it out through your subconscious mind when you are uh, asleep so if you start looking at all these uh, small small uh, you know parameters of course now we have come into a technical uh, technological era so everything now is online and all these things can uh, uh, you know uh, be done uh, through uh, technology so let me also tell you about a few apps which i am told i have not tried it personally so please don't take my word for it but friends have told me that they do help uh, in their sleep process one is called head space h e a d s p a c e head space these are some sound tracks i am told which are very soothing and which help you to uh, sleep another one which has been recommended is the mindfulness app the mindfulness app app this is meditation uh, based as you may be aware of mindfulness in general also mindfulness is a good habit and it does help you in your overall mental and physical health but uh, some people have used this for uh, improving their uh, sleep and they have found good results uh, in it there are also short meditations available on a uh, app called calm c a l m calm they are very short 2 3 minute uh, meditations and some people have said that it has been useful uh, to them similarly some relaxation uh, Uh, techniques which are available on the app called serenity s e r e n i t by serenity so these are some of the apps which people have been telling me that they are using i come back to one very fundamental point i told you what works for a does not necessarily work for b what worked 5 years for you 5 years back for you need not necessarily work for you now so whatever means and you know the methods that you are trying out try it out with an open mind okay some reliable person has recommended this so i am going to give it a uh, shot and i am going to try it out i am going to try it out not for 2 days or 5 days or 10 days but for 3 to 4 weeks either it will work 
or it will work to a very small level or it will not work. It cannot make matters worse. None of these things which I have recommended or which people recommend can make your sleep worse. So don't worry about that. The only thing that can make your sleep worse, as I told you, is continuous intake and haphazard intake of sleeping tablets or those uh, medicines which are supposed to improve sleep but actually make matters worse over a period of time unless they are specifically prescribed by a doctor or a psychiatrist who is monitoring you on a continuous basis and says that yes you do need this it will bring down your stress level it will calm you down it will take away your depression so for various reasons when they prescribe they monitor and they tell you that okay come back after 15 days we'll review again then you may reduce the dosage or you may tell you to stop those are the cases where you definitely can uh, benefit from medication but otherwise don't get into medication by yourself or without proper uh, medical uh, supervision other than the medication as i told you any of these things can be useful try out whichever one appeals to you not because somebody is forcing there are people no no i know it i have done it Are, i got fantastic results man you that's the only way of doing it they try to push you into something don't uh, succumb to such uh, uh, people in fact the more you get carried away by all these people saying these things no the worse will be your sleep because they will add more to your tension when you're going to sleep you will be wondering over oh, tomorrow morning i have to answer to this person what do i say that person was so vehement that this works but it's not working for me so what do i do anxiety can affect your sleep very very badly one of the things that you have to ensure even before this uh, tips and techniques which we have given you shortly and if those of you want you send me an email i'll give you the more elaborate version uh, of it so you can have it keep it with you and use it as in and uh, required but always remember to resolve anything you have to go into the root cause of it so if my sleep is because of my anxiety some pandemic or lockdown something has come and i am being told there are rumors around that my company may close down or it may be taken over by somebody else because of which i may lose my job as long as that anxiety is there now i'm not again saying that anxiety definitely will spoil your sleep there are some people thankfully who sleep through the worst of trauma but here i'm talking about what do you need to do in case it affects your sleep if you find that your sleep is getting affected and at the same time you have identified that my anxiety levels have gone up because there's so much gossip going around all around me saying that our company may close down we may lose jobs so with all that happening whatever methods and techniques i try to improve my sleep may not be effective unless and until i deal with the root cause and what is the root cause the root cause is the anxiety what will happen to me if my company closes down but anxiety is not the same as worry worry is genuine worry is i have lost my job so i am worried my relationship has gone bad that's why i am worried my health is not good or i have become covid positive that is why i am worried but anxiety is what could possibly happen so many people are getting covid what will happen if i get covid somebody has very nicely said anxiety is the interest that you pay on a loan which you have not taken anxiety is the interest that you pay on a loan which you have not taken you haven't taken a loan and you are paying anxiety uh, paying interest on it that's what i said you haven't lost your job you getting a decent salary you are doing your work you are efficient but the anxiety is pulling you down so that's what i said that if you are finding that your sleep is disturbed it is either insufficient or you are tossing and turning or you are waking up you know uh, after so many hours of being on bed you are still waking up a little tired and a little pessimistic or negative in your uh, thoughts then please first check out what could be the root cause 
Is it because my health is threatened, my relationships are not going very well, or I have this anxiety about losing my job? Give a very serious thought to it. People are sometimes in denial. Yeah, that threat is there. I know I may lose my job, but so what? Yeah, I, I will uh, do something. Now, if you are really confident that I will be able to do something, it is fine. But if you are putting on a mask, and I'm not talking about the COVID mask, I'm talking about the mental mask. If you are putting on a mask and trying to show that bravado by saying, so what? I know that I can always get a job. But deep down, your subconscious mind is telling you, no, yeah, you have become much older. You are a little outdated. You don't know what's happening around. People are looking only for younger and younger people. If you lose your job, it may be quite difficult to get, or you may have to sacrifice and go down to a lower level, which is going to be quite humiliating. If those type of thoughts are coming to you, don't deny them. Work on the issues. If you can't work on it yourself, seek help. Sima was telling you, you know that we offer free counseling and we are not the only one. There are so many wonderful people and wonderful institutions which give emotional support. Reach out to any one of uh, uh, them and resolve the issue first. And the chances are that your sleep automatically improves. If it doesn't, then go by the uh, symptomatic uh, things which I have told you. So in the extended version, I've given you some 20, 30 points, different ways and means. Short list out of that. Number one and two, no, it doesn't work for me. Number three, now this looks good, tick mark. Number four, I'm not sure, I'll keep it in reserve, let me move on. Number five, no, doesn't connect to me or doesn't appeal to me. Number six, yes, this looks good. Like that, you shortlist. And then see how many of those you can start practicing. Practice for a few weeks. See if they are giving you results. If they are giving you in those first three weeks even 10 or 20% results, then understand that you are on the right track. All you have to do is to put in maybe a little more effort, be a little more consistent, and be a little more patient. What progress you made in the first three weeks, you will realize that you make double the progress in the next three weeks if you are consistent. And that is how the graph goes up. It's an elliptical graph. It starts like this and slowly turns and goes uh, up. So as long as the graph is turning towards the upper direction, be happy. You know that, yes, earlier I used to have a lot of problems going to sleep today is slightly better after this two, three weeks. I am managing to get some few hours of quality sleep or I am being able to sleep a little uh, earlier than what I used to sleep uh, uh, earlier. These ways, if you adopt this positive attitude, you will realize that you will be able to now, overcome these sort of uh, issues, which are part and parcel of our life. I have taken up sleep only as one of them because I do keep getting a few people every now and then who complain about lack of sleep or bad quality of sleep. And either they run to get some sleeping tablets or they feel that, no, I have to suffer. I can't help it. Whatever I do, I'm not getting sleep. But they are not doing the right things. When they say whatever I do, they are not doing what has to be done systematically and what has to be done, which is time proven, and what has to be done, which appeals and adjusts to your way of uh, life. If you take all those into account, and work. for example, there are a lot of people who you know work in the whatever the Western countries uh, uh, shift timing, so they work in the nights. Now, the night time when they are supposed to be asleep, they have to be wide awake. The whole country is sleeping, but you are awake. And when you get back in the morning and you try to sleep, everybody else is awake. Now, these are issues which have to be taken up individually. Here's a lovely slide which uh, Sunita has made and is uh, showing how there is a sort of you know vicious cycle that develops. If you have poor sleep and if you allow anxiety to take over, then stress uh, uh, increases. If your stress increases, 
your sleep may get uh, uh, bad. If your anxiety increases, your sleep may get uh, uh, bad. So it is an unending cycle that you are caught up with. I, my stresses have gone up. It affected my uh, sleep. Because my sleep got affected, my stress became even more. When my stress became more, I started getting so anxious. What will happen to me? Will I get all right or not? Will things get uh, worse? And because of that, my sleep is getting even more uh, worse. So you see how that vortex you keep getting sucked and sucked and sucked and pulled off. Many of these things can be dealt with. Here are some of the apps which I mentioned and uh, Sunita has put in up uh, for you. I mentioned about uh, uh, serenity, mindfulness, headspace, each one of these calm. These are all some of the things which people have been recommending. I have not personally subscribed to it or I have not used it, so I cannot say with authority. But I have had a number of people who have recommended and said that it is good. So it's up to you. If you are that type of person, do try it out. But nothing like doing things in a more natural manner. Any day, if you ask me, no, instead of going into some apps or going into something which is technology related, what I told you, start your day by getting up, stretching. Haven't you seen animals if you have a cat or dog in the house? How that animal gets up and starts stretching every limb? Who taught that? There's no yoga guru or a physiotherapist who taught them all that. They know that this is what nature is. And we, the supposedly superior race, we have lost these basic instincts. So get back to nature. Do things which are very natural. Get up and stretch out. Go into the sunlight. I keep seeing street dogs who go purposely into places where there's a lot of morning sun coming in. And they will be basking in that sun uh, uh, light. Now, how do they know that this is going to affect me and positively and that I need it? It is instinct. We have actually suppressed our instincts. We have become so caught up with anything else. I started off by telling you how other than human beings, almost all living beings sleep when they feel the need, wake up when they feel the need. Human beings are the only ones who say, Oh, it is 10.30. I should be getting back to uh, uh, sleep. I'm reading an interesting book, but no, 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 no. I, I will lose out on my uh, sleep. I should not uh, you know, delay. 10.30, I have to be in bed. And the same thing, 6 o'clock in the morning, the alarm rings. <clears throat> alarm is wrong. I have to get up. I mean, no mood to get up, but no, alarm is uh, wrong. It is 6 o'clock. I have to get going on this, this, this. You are in unnecessarily increasing your tension. You don't have to do uh, that. So very simple thing. None of these is rocket science. None of these are things which you do not probably not know. You know it at the cognitive level. But I keep reminding people, my job is not to give you gyan. I'm not a guru. I'm not a person who dispenses wisdom. I'm a person who gently nudges you, coaxes you, and make you sit up and think, how do I put into practice certain things which are going to help me to improve my quality of life? And how do I motivate myself to ensure that I am going to try this uh, out? I'm going to be consistent. I'm going to keep trying and moving on uh, this. If you can't do it by yourself, I always recommend what we call as a buddy system. Two of you get together and say, hey, you remind me and I remind you. That person may not have a sleep problem. That may, person may have a uh, concentration problem or study problem or whatever. What you should do is I will remind you and follow you and monitor you for one activity. You remind me and monitor me for another activity. That's how you become buddies and that's how you go. Uh, you have somebody to help you with that uh, thing. You hold hands and you move forward. So please do try it out. Improve your quality of life in different ways. Every Saturday, I'm trying to give you some inputs to help you how to improve your quality of life in small, small manners. Nothing very great or revolutionary. Do practice. Do try it out and see how much it helps or how much it does not um, help. We'll see from time to time whatever is needed. If necessary, you're always welcome to us also. We can. 
you know, have a chat with you, we can discuss with you and whatever we can help you. So with that, sharp on the dot of 12 noon, I say bye-bye to you. And I think I'm going to take a nap. Bye-bye.